I want to introduce you to a rather good set. Yes, beautifully. This could easily be a proper chat show set, couldn't it, in a, in a studio? I think we're getting off to a rather bad start if you're saying this isn't a proper chat show. <laughs> <laughs> I meant a proper chat show in a, in, a, in a studio rather than just one you're filming in. Where, where, do you come here often? Is this your, is this your regular spot? It's not, actually. It's yeah. specifically and particularly yes. designed for you, Clive Anderson. I see. All right. <laughs> right, little giggle. We're going to start. I'm going to put this in. Yes. And you're going to start counting us down, please. Four, three, two, one, zero. A few off. quick questions. Yes. I'm going to be very polite to you. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be very polite to you. Because <laughs> sometimes in the past you were quite rude to some of your guests. We're going to come to that later, though. Yes. All right. <laughs> in, case, in case you have to put a forthright question, in the, just in the interest of entertainment. <laughs> we're going to revisit this quickly, though. Yeah. Firstly, is it true that you support both Arsenal and Rangers? Yes. I, I was, I've got my football adherence from my father, who's a Glaswegian, so I was brought up on tales of Gla Glasgow and, and Rangers, so I always followed them as a child. But he lived in Highbury uh, when he came to London, and I live there now. And we used to go to Arsenal, so I was a, an Arsenal supporter from the word go as well, so Rangers and Arsenal. We also went to Wealdstone, which is in uh, suburban London, so I've got three clubs, but I've rather lost touch with them, I'm afraid. Are you the president of the Woodland Trust? I'm president of the Woodland Trust, so good, good. I'm encouraging you to <laughs> hang on to ancient woodland and plant new trees. Uh, and both of those. do you have any guilty pleasures? Guilty pleasures? Um, that are oh. pre-watershed? Pre Pre <laughs> well, uh, ooh, I can't think of many I want to talk Don't about. Uh, uh, chocolate, uh, plain chocolate digestive biscuits, uh, I think, uh, contribute to my expanding girth. Uh, if that's it, they're, they're pleasurable, and I suppose, I'm, I I suppose I'm guilty about it. Yeah. I think you're looking in pretty good shape. Thank you very much. Is it true to say that you still play football once a week? I do, yes. yes. Every, every Tuesday I play. It's indoors, but uh, we, we play for an hour every week. Yeah. What would your wife say is your biggest fault? Well, I, interesting. You has, you've linked those two. I think I think an over interest in football would be would be one of them. Uh, she doesn't mind me playing uh, football, though she's very. Although she's a doctor, she takes no interest in any football related injuries. She regards those as uh, self inflicted and therefore not anything she wants to worry about. But watching football and having to watch it on television or even you know talking to my children about it and friends. Uh, I, I, she'd put that in that category. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be dangerously rude and say that I have to try and keep your answers a bit shorter. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, before we go back to your chat shows, let's start with the law, because you did practice as a barrister yes. for a lot of years. Yes. What sort of law did you do? Uh, mostly crime. I mean, I did lo lots of things, but that was what I wanted to do, and that's what I mainly did. And are you still a member of a Chambers? Uh, just about. There's, there's a thing. Uh, barristers have their names are written outside their door. Uh, to show where they are, and you, you, there's a thing called a door tenant, which is your, your name is on the door, but you're not really there, or you're not really available for work, so I suppose I'm just about that, yes. Do you follow developments in the law? Well, I do a programme on the radio called Unreliable Evidence about the law, uh, and I bring to that a, a, a facility with uh, legal terms, so I'm always annoyed when they change any legal terms, because I have to try and keep up. So I keep up uh, in that respect, yeah. And has your legal training helped you with your stand-up, which you did at the beginning of the 80s, and with your presenting? Uh, I would say help with the stand-up, but there was a t the time when it seemed to me it made sense that I'd done quite a lot in comedy, you know, a bit of stand-up comedy, writing comedy, and I'd been a barrister doing criminal work, which is knockabout kind of stuff. You do a lot of questioning of people and cross-examining. It, it seemed a natural fit, you know, that I, I, was, I was used to asking people questions and trying to be funny, and that's what, what came together, and almost by accident. The performance of it as well. Was well, the performance of being in, in court. In court. Um, the buzz. Was there yes. a similar buzz? Uh, yes, yes, uh, very similar. It's, uh, and and the, the thing that probably has helped me, or maybe it's been bad in its own way, once you've been cross-examining people and you've been saying to them, you, you did uh, kill that person or you did steal that or, officer, you made that up, it doesn't seem such a dreadful thing to ask of a guest, well, that, uh, the film before last wasn't very good or this book's a bit long. It doesn't seem, you know, it doesn't seem too harsh. But, so I've probably been a bit too harsh in my questioning as a result. Well, this is what I want to tap into a little mm. bit. Because you are, I can tell the audience, a charming man. Thank you very camera. much. Yeah. <laughs> and very charming in front of camera today. Yeah. But you have done some interviews where you've been fairly brutal with yes. some of your guests in the past. Well, I've, I've felt a sort of a duty to it. I suppose a bit like being embarrassed. I felt, you know, on behalf of the, the viewer or the listener, uh, the, this is the question they want asked or this is something would be entertaining to get the person to uh, respond to. So I've probably, um, well, I was going to admit misjudgment, probably I've, I've gone too far in, in that direction. But... 
you know, <laughs> it's, it's been, it's, it might have provided a good moment. <laughs> Famously or infamously, the, the Bee Gees walked off set. Yes, yes. What was going through your mind? Because you can see it on YouTube. Yeah. What was going through your mind as they walked off? Well, I was, I was uh, upset and annoyed with myself that it had, uh, it had taken that turn. I've got, I can sort of rationalise it uh, more now, but uh, what, what was annoying in particular is I wasn't trying to give them a hard time, so I'd misjudged that. It wasn't though I thought, here are the Bee Gees, I've got to nail them down. I was engaging what I thought was a bit of jolly banter. Uh, before getting on to maybe more serious matters, and they still left. And? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> on that note... <laughs> but you've got pages of questions that you were consulting before. <laughs> pages of questions? You yeah. didn't get through almost I'm any sorry. of them. I'm sorry. I did warn you. I did ramble on a lot in my answers. It was great fun. Really <laughs> nice to see you. Well, thank you. you.